The Butcher of Mons Early Saturday morning, the 22nd of March, 1997 Olivier Mott, a member of the local police force, is making his daily patrol on horseback in the old industrial city of Mons, Belgium. Stumbling upon some discarded garbage bags by the side of the road, he laments the ever-growing issue of fly dumping in the city. He dismounts his horse to search the bags for possible clues on who dumped them. The grisly discovery he makes next would stay with him for the rest of his life and would shed a light on one of the most gruesome killing sprees in Belgian history. Cut of Meat When talking about Belgium in the mid to late 1990s, a name mentioned a lot in the context of crime and killers is the infamous Marc de True. However, around the same time an as yet unidentified prowler roamed the streets of Belgium, later dubbed the Butcher of Mons. The killer's brutal modus operandi soon became apparent to mounted police officer Olivier Mott, as he opened a garbage bag by the side of the road and discovered several human arms, legs, and thighs. No sign of a torso or head. During the next couple of days, it became clear that someone had dumped several of these bags throughout the city of Cusms, part of Mons. A total of nine more garbage bags filled with assorted body parts were found that day. One more was found on each of the two following days. The first thing detectives and medical examiners noticed about the body parts was that they were removed with almost surgical precision. They figured the person they were dealing with had at least some experience as a surgeon or possibly a butcher or hunter. It should be noted that later testimony by other members of the police force contradicted this and found the cuts to actually be sloppy and done by someone who had no prior experience. Three weeks later another set of bags is found. This time in Haver, a sleepy village to the east of Cusms. The bags were stuffed away in an abandoned gunpowder factory. For the first time in the case, one of the bags contained the actual head of one of the victims. Later identified as Natalie Goddard, she would turn out to be only one of at least five women brutally murdered, butchered, and scattered around the Mons area. It soon became clear that earlier reports of body parts found in the river Skelt in the French Chateau La Bay were also connected to this case. The body parts were most likely thrown in a river in Mons and made their way south due to the current. A new division of the Walloon police called Corpus was brought in to work the case, using the first instance of DNA analysis in Belgium law enforcement. Eventually, all five women would be identified, even though only one head was retrieved. The cause of death for each one of them was found to be strangulation. 46-year-old Carmelina Russo, working at the time of her disappearance in January of 1996 at a local supermarket and selling lingerie door-to-door, -door, was said to have suffered from a heavy depression. Only her pelvis was discovered in a garbage bag after being dumped in a river. 43-year-old Martine Bone was reported missing in July of 1996. A former prostitute stopped her line of work after getting into a car accident. Her torso was found in a bag, dumped in a local river called De Hen. 33-year-old Jacqueline Leclerc disappeared with no trace around Christmas of 1996. Also, a former prostitute and single mother of four, who worked as a cleaning lady, struggled to make ends meet. Some of her remains were found dumped in garbage bags on the side of the road. 21-year-old Natalie Goddard, missing since March of 1997. After a tumultuous divorce, she spiraled into substance abuse and started hanging around with the wrong crowd. Her daughter was also taken from her care after neglect charges. Some of her limbs were found in the original nine garbage bags linked to the case. Later her head was found in Haver. 38-year-old Begoni of Valencia, never seen again alive after July of 1997. A former mental patient reportedly suffering from butts of depression. In October of the year, she went missing, her skull was found by two children playing in a field. Six months later her spinal column and teeth were found near the same field. All five women were local to the area of Mons, had clear mental and financial issues, and were known to frequent the same place. The Mons train station is an area then known for drugs, prostitution, and other assorted shady characters.